Hello, good evening. I hope um, that you are able to join us and lots of people will join us later on. Um, I'm Heidi Jordison. I'm the head of faculty for Oxfordshire Adult Learning. And welcome to our presentation. Um, I hope you'll enjoy it and find it really interesting. I'm going to take you through um, a presentation just to tell you a little bit about the courses that we offer and, and what Oxfordshire Adult Learning is all about. And then we will have some question and answer time after that, and we'll show you um, a recording of a session and an adult learning session, which I hope you'll be able to participate in even remotely and and enjoy and, and possibly have some questions after that. So I'm going to um, start with our presentation. And it's live. Great. OK, so uh, as I say, we're Oxfordshire Adult Learning. We're a faculty of Abingdon and Whitney College. And in fact, we are the largest faculty in um, in the college. We run approximately 800 courses a year. Certainly not all at the same time, thank goodness, because that's quite a lot of courses to run. Um, but some of them are shorter, some of them are longer, some are year long courses. Some might be workshops that last a day um, or over a weekend, for instance. But certainly 800 different courses um, that we put on every year. We have 6,000 learners uh, who come onto our courses. Often people will come on to more than one course, so they will count twice in our 6,000 um, learners. But we have a really large provision that reaches right across the county, as, as I'll show you shortly, and therefore we collect learners from all over the place. So 6,000 of those and 120 tutors. And they have all sorts of specialisms. Most of our tutors are specialists in their field and have won awards and are really, really experienced, really passionate about what they are doing. So our tutors come from, again, all over the country, all over the county, and they also um, go to all 50 of, of our venues and they will uh, deliver those courses there. So our main campuses are at Abingdon and at Whitney where we also have our 16 to 19 year old um, provision. However, we also have two satellite centres in, um, in Cowley, so for our city provision and also in the north and west in Kidlington, that sort of covers the Banbury, Vista, uh, Whitney areas um, as well. In addition to those campuses, if you like, we also have little venues that we use. So. Any village hall is potentially a venue. We have quite a few partners who have um, space at their own premises who will then lend, lend us a room or we sometimes hire a room. So it could be your village hall. It could be any sort of community centre. It could even be an employer who um, gives us some space or who will ask us to come in to train their staff and then we'll use their premises. Um, so lots of different courses, lots of learners, lots of venues, which gives you an idea as to how we could cover um, a large part of the, the county. Our courses are varied, um, so we have lots of different strands of provision. And uh, the first one is leisure learning, which is exactly as the name says, um, we learn for, for our pleasure. So anything that you can think of that you would like to learn is potentially something that we can offer. So if our brochure or our website doesn't actually have your particular interest um, shown uh, in the listing, then we often say, give us a shout. There might be more than one person who asks for, I don't know, um, Latin, let's say, to learn Latin or to learn calligraphy, something that we don't offer. If there's one person, there's bound to be others. And we are bound to have a tutor somewhere along the line in amongst our 120 or so who will have um, those particular skills um, that they could share. Uh, we're also always interested in people who have particular skills, who can teach others. And if you're passionate about something that you're really good at or have experience in, then we always welcome people to contact us um, with your details and, and your um, CV. So we can have a look at that and then we'll um, see if we can put together a course. So if there's anything that, that you're sitting there thinking, oh, I could teach that or I'd like to get into teaching, that would be one of the ways to do it. Uh, we also have community-led learning, which is um, a very big part of our provision and actually one that we get funded for by the um, government mostly. And we deliver a lot of um, courses in the community and, and the courses there are really aimed at particular target groups. So we 
can work with any um, groups that range from um, ex-offenders to asylum seekers to people who are wanting to learn English as a second language. Um, parenting courses also sometimes fall into those. Um, and we can do anything really in the community that a community needs. Uh, we could be quite responsive. So if there's a particular need in an area um, that might be, let's say, identified by um, a council, for instance, then we can make a bespoke course to, um, to talk about that. Um, we've also got a, a branch of family learning, and this is really where we go into schools. And the schools are normally the ones who identify particular, um, almost parenting courses, if you want to call them that. Uh, mostly they are in primary schools and the primary schools will then um, send learners our way, parents our way. What we're trying to do really is to upskill the parents so that they can help to um, support their children better in their own learning. So we, we typically see courses where um, the parents might not be confident in maths, let's say, and we will then teach them the basics of, of the maths that their children are learning in primary school. And then when they are feeling more confident with that, we bring the children along and we have parent and children courses where um, our teacher will work with the parents and the children to help support that learning. Very often, people who start with us in family learning also go on to doing um, courses with us uh, and possibly taking uh, qualifications and especially English and math seems to be quite a, um, a popular route. And for many people who haven't um, been able to secure a GCSE in English or maths, this is sometimes the first step. So this is a really exciting part of our provision and, and something that we um, that we're really proud of as well. The next bit is our subcontracted provision, and that is really where we have learners out in the community who we can't reach for whatever reason. It could be that it's a very bespoke kind of learner or group of people who are part of a charity or who are known to a charity that we are unable to reach. And sometimes these are vulnerable learners as well. So our subcontractors are the ones who actually do the teaching, but we um, provide the support and we look at all the legalities around the, the teaching that they are doing. Um, and we, if there are exams um, involved, and sometimes there are, then we um, do the administration for that and make sure that the quality of their provision is, um, is really high and that they feel supported to support um, their learners. So quite varied in our um, approach to um, our curriculum. And as I say, if this is, um, if, if there is something that you think, gosh, I could be um, teaching other people to do that, I have a passion for this, can I teach others? Then absolutely that might be possible and um, it could be a route into teacher training. Um, so I always think, have a think about that. If there's something at all, let us know. We're always looking for new and different things and certainly things that are popular in, in society and out in the community to be able to offer our, um, our students. Just to give you a little bit of um, a flavour of the types of courses that we do, and these courses would span most of those provision types, not just leisure learning. The biggest part of our provision is languages, um, and we have really a vast number of languages. So we do Spanish, Italian, Greek, um, we do British Sign Language, German, so quite a lot of um, courses on different levels as well. We often have two beginners courses um, each year, normally a shorter one in September, followed by a medium sized course a bit longer in January and then towards the end of the year um, an even longer course. So it, it covers the whole year and your beginners and your improvers um, course could fall within one academic year. As the levels become more complicated and, and higher in their degree of difficulty, those courses become year long courses um, and students often progress from the very beginnings right through to really high level fluency courses and, and even some of our um, learners will then express an interest in a particular part of the language that they would like to learn, whether it's something to do with uh, legal matters or whether it's um, something to do with business. Um, that almost becomes a bespoke course then because those people will have become fluent in the language that they've they've learned. 
sometimes we also offer co shorter courses for people who want to use the language for holidays. So we do, often do Italian for holidays where you will learn all those different phrases like uh, where is the bar or um, how do I order my dinner or can you point me to the beach? Those sorts of uh, questions that you, phrases that you would want to be confident in so that you can communicate with the people um, around you wherever you're going in the world on a lovely holiday. Uh, of course, when that returns to us again, um, hopefully soon. We also offer a vast range of courses in art. So from pencil drawings right through to painting, uh, we also offer um, life drawing courses so that is a quite a specialist area and something that, that people don't normally start with but certainly um, if you've got a little bit of experience life drawing might be something that you enjoy or portrait drawing. We have an arrangement with the Ashmolean Museum where we take learners in to do museum drawing and this is a really interesting and fascinating process to watch. Our learners sit within the museum um, normally on a little chair or one of the little stools that they provide us and draw some of the statues and some of, of the displays that they have um, in the Ashmolean and from different angles. So you can have three, four people drawing the same thing and each looking at it from a different angle. And it's really fascinating to see how people's um, impression and people's own interpretation of those um, displays, what that looks like. We also have um, lots of different sorts of arts as in um, printmaking, so um, almost like screen printing if you like, but not quite. It's a more, more manual sort of process, um, printmaking on paper. We have pottery courses that are very, very popular and people stay on our pottery courses for a very long time and we're hoping to expand our provision for September and, and put on even more courses. So here you'll learn anything from um, making a model out of clay or a, let's say, I don't know, a vase or something like that, freehand. And then also we have um, our pottery wheels and you would be able to learn how to throw a pot. Those are then fired in our kilns and very often students are also able to glaze them and decorate them and paint them um, however they would like to do that. Those courses, again, um, are mixed ability, so you might have somebody who's just starting out and then in the same class you might have somebody who's quite more advanced. And the beauty of that is that people learn so well from each other and not just from, from the teacher. We have lots of sewing courses which are very popular, right from making the patterns um, and then general sewing techniques and then going on to making skirts and shirts and children's clothes. So sometimes quite specific. We also have um, classes that work over weekends, so just a Saturday or Sunday sewing class. Um, in particular, the ones that, that seem to be popular are the ones that tell you how to use your sewing machine, because I suppose like many of us, we buy a piece of equipment and it's quite difficult to teach yourself to use your sewing machine because they are really complex things these days and computerized and so on. So that's something that um, that people often want to do is, is um, learning to love their sewing machine. Photography is another very fascinating and um, exciting course for people to start their journey on right from the beginning with digital photography and moving right up. There are six stages that people go through and learn from. Um, each looks at a different aspect and it becomes more increasingly difficult as you go along. Um, students bring along their own camera and they are then taught how to use that and how to critique and best use their camera for, for best effect in terms of taking photographs. And we also look at what are the legalities about um, street photography and photographing other people and the permissions that you would need, etc. So that in particular is a favourite of mine. I like going to watch those classes happen because it's always something beautiful to look at and interesting um, perspectives. Lots of our cooking courses are popular with um, people now, especially in lockdown, as, as most people are at home doing a lot more cooking and a lot more baking. So we have um, Italian cooking, we have bread making, we have um, courses in vegetarianism, which seem to be very popular at the moment, and also uh, courses that really look at nutrition and not just um, the actual cooking of, of the meals, but how is that actually contributing to your well-being and your health? 
our digital courses are um, extremely popular as well, and there are quite a few courses that are completely fully funded currently where the government are sponsoring people to take these courses to improve the digital skills of us as a nation. And I think especially in, in today's terms, as we are here looking at um, this presentation online rather than in the college as we would have normally on an open day, many more people are online nowadays and are engaging with online activity, be that for leisure or for business. Um, so leisure courses are also run online. Many of our art courses have been online, language courses, photography courses and so on. So lots of the, our courses are running as online courses currently in the pandemic and hopefully we'll all be back in some sort of a room somewhere together again at some point. However, we do realise that online courses is probably the way um, that things will go in the future. We run successful plumbing courses, always oversubscribed people who want to learn how to do their plumbing, small plumbing jobs themselves. We all know how very expensive it is to get a plumber to come and, I don't know, change a washer or do something like that. So lots of plumbing courses um, happen in the evenings, again, with quite a vast variety of abilities. We have a bespoke um, plumbing room where you will see all sorts of equipment, um, right from um, boilers to heating systems and so on. And you learn to solder and extend pipes. So that's a really uh, popular course for us as plumbing. We also run courses that have some um, well-being and physical um, health uh, as a theme. So as you can see, a yoga lady in a lotus position with arms extended, I believe. Uh, so yoga is popular. We also run lots of mindfulness courses, especially now. During lockdown, we have found that people um, have really um, reached out and, and asked for those sort of mindfulness courses. We also run a mental health awareness qualification alongside that. We do have a ballet class um, which currently runs in the city for mature students, ladies, gentlemen, anybody is welcome. Um, very popular as well, good form of exercise, good for those core strength and flexibility, especially as we get older. Our floristry courses run all year and they um, are quite um, themed really around the seasons and what is available. So our tutors will ask students to bring in some flowers and we sometimes provide them ourselves too. And you make all sorts of decorations, um, sometimes Christmas time, there'll, there'll be Christmas wreaths and Christmas decorations for the table, um, Easter time, Mother's Day, all those sorts of celebrations as well. We do offer some music classes. We run guitar and ukulele courses. At the moment, those are online, starting with the beginners A normally in September and then moving the way through until you get to the improvers and mixed ability closer to the end of the academic year, so sort of April, May time. Two quite special courses that we run um, in terms of arts and crafts are jewelry making and um, stained glass. These are always very popular and always fully subscribed. Um, the stained glass course has many facets and everybody works on it, their own project. You would learn how to cut the glass, how to solder the, the lead and how to put together your, your picture. So from design right through to um, finishing an, an article. At the beginning, most students do a very small pane or they make um, something like uh, an animal or, or something quite with simple lines. And as time goes on, people become quite elaborate in their, um, in their creativity. Our tutor will provide some of the resources that you will need. And you might also have to um, invest in one or two tools, but those are normally shared, uh, that information is shared on the course information sheet. So you'll know exactly what, um, what you need to purchase or how much that might cost you. Our jewellery making tutor is absolutely phenomenal. She has um, lots of her own designs on um, display and also um, she sells her own designs. Our students make things like rings, earrings, pendants, bracelets um, using normally um, silver. It's normally silver jewellery and then um, embellish them with things like beads and, and paints and so on. So it could be very simple wire bending and, and wire with um, as you can see there, um, beads and those sorts of things and 
at times it, it's actually a cutout of a design like a snowflake or um, perhaps um, an elephant or a lion and it could be just the outlines of that particular shape or it could be um, a flat shape with lots of um, indentations and lots of um, sort of grafting on on the actual design so anything again that you wish to make uh, we will help you to be able to do that so again it's like working on your own project i've already mentioned the digital um, skills courses we also run a course in photoshop so um, just to be able to edit your own photographs uh, there's also um, a course in games development um, coding how to, to do coding, um, and that seems to be a very popular one um, as well. So that just hopefully gives you a flavor of the kinds of courses that we run. I could probably go on all day about the kinds of courses we run, but those are the most popular ones and the ones that we see people enrolling to um, very quickly when our prospectus comes out. I thought it might be interesting to just share with you some of the things that our learners say about us. And the first two quotes uh, were from um, a Japanese class. So it's really interesting to see how our learners start in very basic levels and then move up. And in the second quote, it's interesting because the person who wrote that is actually now using their Japanese in their work, which is really fantastic to see um, that somebody was actually able to learn enough to be able to secure work in the Far East and to use their language at such a high level. Um, lovely quote also about our yoga and a lot of our um, students um, being sometimes um, retired or living alone have really appreciated the fact that we are still online and we're still doing classes, we're still engaging people um, and it's a bit like a lifeline for people as well. Uh, here's a long old quote about um, Spanish but it's really lovely and um, it sings the praises of our teacher Gloria Thomas. Um, and all the lovely things that she is doing. Um, of course, in lockdown, most of these language courses have almost been online for a whole year now. Um, and it's really interesting to see how people have um, embraced that and how people are making great progress and even are managing conversations with each other in small breakout rooms. Um, and really supporting each other. Lots of our students have also decided on their own accord to have little get togethers on Zoom or on other platforms um, via WhatsApp to have conversations with each other outside of lesson time. And, and that's really heartwarming. Uh, some Polish and French feedback um, as well um, and tells you a little bit about how well our students are doing and how well our teachers are doing. And then last but not least, another little slide just with some information from um, our yoga beginners course and how relaxing and um, positive it was. And then um, an art class and, and Grant is one of our permanent teachers, also very well established in, in art circles. And Grant also works quite a lot within um, our hospital settings um, in Oxford and does um, art courses there for people who are, are in hospital longer term. And that is the end of our presentation. Um, and if there were any questions, I'd be happy to answer those now. I've just uh, got a couple, Heidi. One was about um, they'd seen the uh, museum drawing course yeah. advertised. Is that going to take place in the museum or is that going to be an online? Mm, good question. As we are currently in lockdown and the museums are obviously closed, we are running the museum drawing class online. I suppose a, a good thing is the museums all have such fantastic websites and very often they have video clips and, and they show you around the, the building, don't they? And they show you what those particular um, uh, displays look like. So. Our very skillful tutor Tatiana has developed a way in which she can actually deliver a virtual uh, reality, I suppose almost, course within the museum, but online. Very interesting um, and very skillful of her. So currently, unfortunately, we are banned from leaving the house and leaving and going to the museum at all. Um, but when restrictions are lifted and certainly when the museum is able to take us back, we will be back there. 
um, and working within their, their COVID risk assessment and, and ours um, to make sure that our students stay safe. OK, uh, there's another follow up one to that. When classes do come back into college and schools, um, will they be COVID secure? Yes, yeah, so the college has done a lot of work around um, making sure that we are absolutely a COVID secure environment. We have uh, limited the number of people that can enter a classroom. So every classroom door has um, a number of people that we can house there or accommodate there. Um, and we have set our limits, the upper limit for our courses to match so that we know we are keeping people at a two metre distance. All our staff have had training um, within uh, the risk assessments and, and know what to do and how to do it. Um, we in, encourage our students to wear masks if um, they are comfortable with that in the classroom, they can keep them on, but certainly in um, communal areas, masks are um, required. And then as per most places nowadays, when you go in, there's a, um, a station with hand gel, which um, we ask students to use. Uh, the classrooms are uh, cleaned two, three, four times a day. The high, uh, um, high volume or sort of high um, rotation areas, if you like, where people come and go a lot, so like corridors and, and those places are cleaned more often and um, things like door handles um, are, are cleansed all the time. Um, our uh, toilet facilities, etc. again, much stepped up um, in terms of cleaning routines. And then in classrooms themselves, we are encouraging learners to not move around. So we and Effie, we really like people moving around and and mingling and sharing. Um, but at the moment that is not possible. So we are keeping people seated in a particular place. Those desks, those chairs are cleaned before um, the class starts. And then we also um, do the same again at the end of the lesson. So uh, whatever it takes to keep ourselves safe and whatever our students feel comfortable with is um, is what we are doing. Some things are, are required and we have to do, for instance, masks in communal areas. Um, but some people feel more comfortable without a mask in um, in a classroom, especially if the windows are open and there's good ventilation and so on. OK, there's just two more questions. One was mm -hmm. about um, the cookery classes. Yeah. So when they were um, when they're back on on uh, in, in colleges and schools, do um, do students have to pay for their their ingredients? It depends on the course, but mostly you would get um, an ingredient list that your teacher will um, ask you to to bring. Very often our teachers have um, herbs and spices and those sorts of things where you need minute quantities and they can be quite expensive, can't they? So we wouldn't want you to buy a whole, I don't know, what are they, 100 grams of turmeric when you need to. So um, our tutors will have some ingredients and those sort of base cupboard, store cupboard type things they will bring along. Um, but depending on what you're cooking the following week, you will get a list of ingredients that you would need. Um, I would say that we try our very best to make it as affordable as possible because ingredients can be expensive, but um, we try and, and be aware of people's budgets and you know most people will be watching their budgets all the time. OK, and the last question was just um, somebody was asking about ESOL classes. Right, so ESOL doesn't quite um, sit within my remit, but I do know quite a bit about it. So ESOL classes are um, run at most of our sites um, and I believe there is a um, so a, a test, if you like, just to, to check what your ability level is before you start. It's nothing serious, it's nothing to worry about, but um, certainly that your starting point needs to be assessed so that you can get the right advice and guidance in terms of the level of course that you um, are required or would be required for you to take and what's best for you. Um, I think the idea really with anything that we, we do at the college is not to set people up to fail. So making sure that, that everybody is on the right course for them. So certainly English and maths, um, they look after, after the ESOL classes. Those are normally quite small in group size uh, with quite a lot of um, individual attention um, to our, our learners as well. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, OK, and that, that's, uh, that's it from the questions so far. OK, lovely.
So this is just a, a lesson that, that we've <coughs> pre-recorded uh, and it is our lovely tutor, Bina, um, looking at a hand massage, a, a sort of a self hand massage lesson, which um, is really relaxing to watch and I hope you, you'll enjoy that. Welcome to Self Massage Workshop. My name is Veena. I work for Oxfordshire Adult Learning. So today we are going to look at the self massage in three components. First, we will look at benefit of self massage. At the end of the workshop, I wonder if you can identify two benefits of self massage. And then we will look at what essential oils are. At the end of the workshop, can you identify one benefit and one counter benefit of essential oils? And then finally, I'm going to show you simple techniques of a simple hand massage. At the end of the workshop, can you give yourself a gentle, simple hand massage? So what you need for self massage are four items. First, moisturizer or massage oil of your choice. The best options are the one you normally use. Then a choice of your essential oils, then a clean towel, and then finally, most importantly, a warm and a comfortable place to sit. So why self-massage? There is nothing better than getting a trained massage from the professionals, but that's not always practical. So we can get many of the same benefits from performing self-massage. Um, improving circulation is one of the benefits. Relaxation, reduced pain can also be some of the benefits of massaging ourselves. It can easily be worked out in our daily schedule. The benefits are also no need to book an appointment. And anytime, anywhere, it's up to us to tailor. And also no need to worry about social distancing. And finally, it's also free. But first things first, always, always patch test essential oils and massage oils. In order to avoid unnecessary discomfort, First thing first, the most important things before we apply self-massage is to patch test. How we can apply patch test is to take a little bit of the moisturizers or the essential oils you're going to use, dab inside your arm. And today I might use Cotswold lavender smells of uh, summer Cotswold, that's nice. And ideally, we leave the area for about 30 minutes. So in case you're, the area you dab the cream or essential oil start getting red, irritating or getting itchy, please wash off with clean water and do not apply any other cream. If the condition is serious, please consult with your GP. So the benefits of self-massage are rejuvenating our body. A more leisurely self-massage while focusing on breathing helps our mind slow down and the body to relax. Also, the self-massaging can help detoxifying our body's largest organ, skin. That's promoting the flushing out of impurities and toxin through our skin. It also stimulates our body's energetic channels so our energy flows freely. Self-massage stimulates our energetic channels, promoting easy flow of our life force, also known as a chi or ki, that means a spirit, through our mind and body and also promote youthfulness. And the last benefit and the most important aspect, I believe, is it is to nurture ourselves. Self-massage is the most incredible act of kindness and love to ourselves. There's no wrong way to practice gentle self-massage than not doing it at all. 
10 minutes of daily self-massage often makes many benefits, such as tone the body tissue, lubricate joints, improve circulation and lymphatic drainage, softer skin, healthier hair, decrease stress, improved sleep, more graceful aging, and much, much more. The important thing we need to remember always is to control the pressure and the personal space that are enjoyable to us. This promotes a feel-good factor. We can also enjoy and experiment different aroma and the benefit of essential oils. Avoid ones which you don't like the smell or causing allergic reactions, such as sneezing, for instance. Always patch test before applying massage and essential oils on your skin. Always keep them away from children and the pets. Ingestion of essential oils is not always safe. And some of the essential oils, particularly citric base, are photosynthetic. That means certain oils increase the photosensitivity and may increase the risk of sunburn and sunspots. Plants and essential oils derived from them contain the chemical compounds that have a various beneficial effect on the human body. Pure essential oils not only smell wonderfully, but can also provide enhanced massage experience and the direct physical and mental health benefits. They have also been shown to provide natural disinfectant, insecticidal and antimicrobial properties, making them an alternative to conventional products. Undistilled oil, such as synthetic oils or fragrant oils, can be harmful to our skin and can cause burning sensation or irritation. Never apply neat essential oils directly on your skin. How we can identify whether they are essential oils or fragrant oils? Always read the labels. Normally it says pure essential oils or fragrant oils. Take an example. Bergamot this citrus oil gives Earl Grey tea its very distinctive flavour and is used to relieve anxiety. Bergamot is also is being studied for its potential to lower cholesterol. Another example is rosemary. Distilled from a cooking herb, rosemary essential oil is believed to enhance mental focus and is also being studied for the prevention of dementia. So today, I am going to use lavender oil. Lavender oil is believed to have an antiseptic and anti-inflammatory properties, which can help to heal minor burns and bug bites. It may be useful for treating anxiety, insomnia, depression, restlessness, and provide us calming effects. Consuming lavender as a tea can help digestive issues such as nausea, and intestinal gas. It can also help relieve pain such as headaches and also can be used to prevent hair loss. So today I'm going to show you simple techniques to hand massage. The hand massage has a potential to improve our health and well-being in a number of ways such as reducing hand pain, reduce anxiety, improve mood, create better sleep and also greater grip strength as well. The technique I'm going to show you today is based on hand reflexology. Reflexology is a type of massage that involves applying different amounts of pressure to the feet, hand and the ears. It's based on a theory that these body parts are connected to certain organs and the body systems. Applying pressure to these parts offer a range of health benefits. Getting a regular massage may also help lower our blood pressure. A twice weekly general massage, not only hands, will significantly reduce stress levels. 
So here is a chart of hand reflexology. As you can see, different parts of uh, both left and right palms are connected to different parts of our body. So the area of focus today is head, pituitary and neck, shoulders, and trapezius. So the technique I'm going to show you today will help relieve your tensions from the neck to the shoulder. Now I'm going to show you the techniques. We have four steps. First, we are going to start with taking a cream, mix with essential oils, rub gently, enjoy the aroma. Put them outside. Then we clasp our hands together. Close your eyes. Feel the oil getting warmed by the warmth of your hands. Then we will practice a little bit of palm stretch. Put your arm, arms out. Slide and push it out gently. Outside. Do the same for the other. Stretch. Outside. Then link fingers together at the base of the fingers. Hold gently. Rotate. You might hear slight cracklings. I call it the sound or the signs of overuse, my hands. Step two, we have a thumb walk. Thumbs up. From the base of your wrist, thumb walk to the base of your fingers. Let's start from the base of fifth finger. Wrist, thumb walk to the base of fifth finger. Back to the wrist, thumb walk to the base of fourth finger. Wrist to the base of third finger. Wrist to the base of second finger. Wrist to the base of thumb. Let's try from outside. Wrist, back of the wrist to the base of fifth finger. Wrist to the fourth. Wrist to the third. Wrist to the second, wrist, to the first. Then we do the same for the other hand. Wrist, to the fifth, wrist, to the fourth, wrist, to the third, wrist, to the second, wrist, to the first. The same for outside, back of the wrist, to the fifth, wrist to the fourth, wrist to the second, wrist to the second, wrist to the thumb. So step three for the preparation of hand reflexology is finger reflex. So if you take the hand, right hand, and make an L shape at the angle at the base of thumb. Gentle grip, rotate outside, inside. Move slightly to the tip, out, in, move, out, in, move, out, in. We do the same for the second finger. Craft at the base, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. We do the same for the third. Out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. From the base of the fourth, out, in, out, in, out, in. For the fifth, out, in, out, in, out, in. We do the same for the other hand. 
gentle grab, out, in, out, in, out. Second, out, in, out, in, out. Out, in, out, in, out. Fourth finger, out, in, out, in, out. Fifth finger, out, in, out, in, out. Then, gentle stretch. However, never pull your fingers. It's almost grab and slide. Grab and slide. Ever so gentle. Grab and slide. Grab and slide. Grab and slide. We do the same for the other. Grab and slide. Grab and slide. Grab and slide. Grab, slide, grab, slide. Now we are going to reflex on the right hand. Make an L shape with the left hand. Grab at the base of thumb, move outward, inward, outward, inward, outward, inward. Move on to the second finger. Grab, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. Third finger, grab at the base, move outward, inward, out, in, out, in, out, in. Fourth finger, grab, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. Fifth, grab, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. And the final stage of the preparation is reflex. This time, we are going to do the reverse order from what we did as step one. So we are going to link the fingers, hold, rotate a wrist the other way, and then palm stretch, hands out, palm stretch, outside, the other side, arms out, palm stretch, the other side. And then finally, clasp the hand together and close your eyes. So now I'm going to show you some techniques to relieve the stress on the shoulders and neck using the basic hand reflexology ideas. Let's start. It's thumbs up again. The areas for the brain and the head are on the tip of our fingers. When we are nervous, we often tap the fingers. When we are irritated, we tap the tables. That makes sense. So, thumbs up. Press the tip of your thumb and then move downward. Tip of the finger, slide it down halfway through. Press slide. Again, tip to the halfway through. Press, slide down. Press, slide down. Tip to halfway through. Press, slide down. We do the same for the other hand. Tip to halfway through. Press, slide down. Tip to halfway through. Press, slide down. Press, slide down. Press, slide down. Press, slide down. At your own pace, if you can practice this technique twice. Press, down. Press, down. Press, down. Press, down. Press, down. The other side. Press, down. Press, down. Press, down. Press, down. Press down. Last set. Press down. Press down. Press down. Press down. Press down. The other side. Press down. Press down. Press down. Press down. Press down. As you can see on the chart, there is a black star in the middle of your palm. That's where your movement is directed to. 
Second, we will look at the green area, which is for the neck. Again, thumbs up. At the base of the thumb and the second finger, press inward to where the black star is marked. Again, press to the center. Press to the center. We do the other side. At the base of thumb and the second finger, press to the center. Press to the center. Press to the center. The third area of our focus is trapezius. Trapezius is a large area of the muscle, triangular muscles, from the neck down the shoulder braid. That area is located at the base of four fingers. So again, we will move from the base of the finger to the center. Thumb up from the little finger to the center. Press to the center. Press to the center. Press to the center. The other side. Thumb up. Press to the center. Press to the center. Press to the center. Press to the center. Again. Press to the center. Press to the center. Press to the center. Press to the center. Press. <laughs> Press to the center. 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 Last set. Press to the center. Press to the center. Press to the center. Press to the center. And then we will move from the little finger to the second finger to the center. Thumb, press, slide to the second finger to the center. Once again, base of the little finger to the second finger to the center. Last one, press, slide to the center. We do the same for the other. Thumbs up, press at the base of the little finger, slide to the base of the second finger, to the center. Again, little finger to the second, to the center. Little, slide to the second and to the center. Last area of our focus is the shoulder which locate at the base of between fifth and the fourth finger to the wrist. We press, slide down to the center. Almost like a, the L shape. Press, slide down to the center. Press, slide to the center. The other side between the fourth and the fifth finger at the base, slide down to the center, slide down to the center, slide down to the center. And finally, we are going to have a reflex again. Hold the hands together, rotate, palm stretch, the other side, palm stretch, the other side, fingers again, clasp hand together, put it on your lap. So when we finish our massage, what do we do? So when we are done, it's helpful to rinse off the excess oil in warm water or wipe with clean towel. Make sure you don't use soap as you want the oils to fully absorb instead of being scrubbed away. 
if possible, try to practice this on a twice weekly basis. You will soon feel the benefit of self-massage in many areas of your life. As we came to the end of the workshop, let me ask you the three questions I asked you earlier. One, can you identify two benefits of self-massage? Number two, can you identify one benefit and one counter-benefit of using essential oils? Number three, and most importantly, can you give yourself a gentle hand massage and will you give yourself time to relax? So thank you very much for joining today's workshop. I hope you enjoyed. If you're interested, please visit Abingdon Whitney College website part-time to learn more. Although this is the voice to listen to, vina has got a really soothing voice um, and it's a really good lesson. Um, and thank you for joining us.